church. We're so excited that y'all are here with us this morning. Uh, my name's Taylor. I'm one of the worship leaders. You guys can be seated really quick. Uh, we are so, so excited for today. First of all, moms, happy Mother's Day. Yes, all the moms. Come on. It's my first Mother's Day, and uh, it's crazy. Can't believe it. I told, who was Mike? I was like, I'm responsible for a human. And <laughs> And I was like, oh my goodness. Um, but if you're new with us today or you want more information about the church, we have a phone number that you can text connect to. It is on our screen. Go ahead, send us a text message, and we will get in touch with you. Uh, but today, we are also honoring some new babies here at West Cobb Church. We have a baby dedication. And uh, to kick us off, we're going to check out this video on the screen. Church, let's stand back up together. We're going to continue to worship God in this place. He's so worthy. Let's honor him together as we sing.
your scripture tells us that you leave the 99 to go after the one. Thank you, Jesus. In all of your spirit, Lord, in all of your presence in this place. Thank you for meeting us exactly where we are, God. No matter what we're walking through, you show up. You show up right on time. And if all of creation will sing Jesus, then so will we. We will sing in this place. We will declare your name. God, thank you for this time of worship. It's in your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys can be seated. Good morning, a wonderful time of worship, and uh, we're going to continue. In the month of May, we've kicked off a series called Heaven, and I think especially on a day like today uh, when there's special moments like a Mother's Day, a Father's Day, uh, and other holidays of the sort, we often think about the fact that there are those that have lost their mom or they lost their father, and especially today, I know that there are some of you that maybe you're remembering your mom and uh, she's, maybe she's passed. And what I want to share with you today is a wonderful truth that if she is in relationship with Jesus Christ when she passed, I'm going to share with you a little bit today a glimpse of what she's doing right now. And it's good. So uh, you'll leave here excited. Um, though those moments can make us look back and we get a little bit of grief comes to us and, and invades our heart, what I want to share with you is there's much for us to be joyful about when we think about heaven. And, uh, you know, everybody has a, a different idea of heaven, even among Christians. We talked about that last week. And as we go through this quest of understanding heaven and dedicate this month to the topic of heaven and looking specifically at what scripture says and what it does not say, we talked about last week the fact that there are misconceptions. There's these ideas of heaven that some of them are fables, right? They're not necessarily scriptural. And so we're trying to pull from scripture exactly what heaven is. But our ideas will, will vary. All of us have a different view of what heaven is and even how we'll get there. And it reminded me of a story there was a mom, a young mom, and, and she was exasperated, and uh, she was tired, and she was weary. She had that son that was in the, you know, that toddler age, you know, that three, four, five years of age, and, and this child was wild, right? And it was a boy, and his name was Dylan, and he was, he was bouncing off the walls, and this mom was exasperated, and it was m mischief after mischief after mischief. And she finally asked him, how do you expect to get into heaven? She asked Dylan that question. How do you expect to get into heaven? And Dylan thought for a moment, and he said, well... What I'll do is I'll run in and out, in and out, and I'll keep slamming every door until St. Peter says these words, for heaven's sake, Dylan, either come in or stay out, right? So, not a true story, but so, 
But all of us have ideas of how we're going to get to heaven, do we not? And I want to share with you today some very specific things, questions that we all have. Like if I were to die today, what is next? What is next? That's the first question. If I die today, as it relates to heaven, as it relates to the afterlife, as it relates to me being in the presence of God, the first question is, what is next? Well, I love what the Apostle Paul wrote in the book of 2 Corinthians, and you can read with me. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul writes, and he gives us a glimpse of that. In verses 5 through 10, he says this, Now, the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due for the things done well while in the body, whether good or bad. Now when Paul writes here, and he's speaking to the church, the Corinthian church, he's sharing with them the work of the Holy Spirit, and the work of the Holy Spirit, Jesus brought to you atonement, and the Holy Spirit seals your relationship with God and guarantees that when you are absent from the body, that you die, that you are present with the Lord. Jesus paid the price, and the Holy Spirit Spirit is the evidence that you are in relationship and that if you die, you move into the presence of God. So when we think about what is next, the reality is this, we do move into the presence of God. So I thought I wanted to do something today. I wanted to give you a timeline that I want you to look at with me because I get this question quite often. If I die today, Really, what is next? What are the events that are going to occur? So we, I actually put together a timeline that I wanna share with you, and I want you to take a moment and look at this. First of all, there is heaven. Heaven as we know it today, if I die today, it is being in the presence of the living God, that I am in the presence of God. Now, this is not heaven in the sense of the new heaven and the new earth, the final destination, but it is heaven in the sense that my spirit is now in the presence, united back with God, as was originally intended, that we would be in fellowship with God. If you remember, in the Garden of Eden, the real purpose that God had when he created man and woman was that he would be in fellowship with that creation. And because of sin, that fellowship was broken. And from that moment, what has God done? From the beginning of that moment that man was cast out of the Garden of Eden, God has been on mission to bring us to a place of redemption so that when our life on earth ends, we can be in right relationship with him. God is on a journey to be in relationship with us, and we're on a, or should be on a journey to be in relationship with him. So when we die, if we are a believer, it is heaven, the presence of God. Now, the second thing is this. What are the events that occur if I die today, I'm in the presence of God, then what, is, what do we believe in terms of scripture? We believe that there's an event called the rapture where there's a uniting with Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ then takes his place as ruler of this new heaven and earth. But prior to that, after the rapture, there's the judgment seat of Christ which Paul actually speaks to in this passage of Scripture. And the judgment seat of Christ is where the believers are judged for what is good or bad. Now, it's not, not the great white throne of judgment. It is the judgment seat of Christ where we, as believers, we, all of our works, are judged, okay? Now, then you have what is known as the tribulation period. So after the rapture of the church, 
the judgment seat of Christ, what the Bible lays out from a prophetic point of view is that there is a period of time that is a tribulation. That's a seven year period where the earth is in distress and then there is the Antichrist, the one world, one world rule. Then you have the millennium. So after the tribulation, Jesus Christ then reigns for 1,000 years. And then that is followed by the great white throne of judgment where you have the new heaven and the new earth and you have what we often hear as the lake of fire or hell, separation from God. So these are sort of the sequence of events that occur. But Paul gives us this word today. He goes, I want you to be confident in this. If you were to die today and you are atoned by Jesus Christ and you are sealed by the Spirit of God, I want you to live with this confidence. The confidence that I want you to live with is that you will be present with God. So if you've lost a mom, if you've lost a loved one, and they were in relationship with Jesus Christ, and they were in relationship with God, know this, they are in the presence of God right now. They're not in the final heaven and earth, they're not in that new heaven and earth, but they are in heaven in the presence of the living God. So think about that. While we are on here on earth, I can be confident that even though I experience affliction, what I know is this, is that I have as a believer a greater glory. Life can get us down. I mean, life can throw things at us and we can certainly find ourselves in a lot of mess, can we not? We can find ourselves in great positions of discouragement. We can find ourselves in position to where it's like, how did I end up here? But what I want you to remember, if you're a believer here today, that is nothing more than a light affliction. That when you and I leave this earth, we continue in eternity and we are in the presence of the living God, the God of all comfort, who ultimately will wipe away every tear from our eye. So I can live live in confidence today that these afflictions pale in comparison to the very glory of God when I enter into heaven. Nothing to worry about. Nothing greater than the fact that I will be in the glory and the presence of God. Now, I can also live in confidence that the Spirit of God is evidence of God at work in my life. The Holy Spirit, I can have confidence because the Holy Spirit is the indication that God is at work in my life. Listen, God speaks uniquely. God moves in and out of our lives. There's things that happen that we don't quite understand. And let's be honest, nobody here has a lock on God. Nobody here completely understands it all. We're all in this pursuit and we're all in this journey together. But along the way, the spirit of the living God gives us evidence and reminds us, hey, you're on the right path. Hey, you're going the right direction. And so Paul says you can be confident that you are going to go into the presence of God because I'm going to remind you by giving you evidence of the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit. So what is next? Number one, right now today, I can view life differently. I don't have to worry about all those things that I face. They are indeed light affliction, afflictions. Number two, I can live with confidence that I have an eternal destiny, that this is not the end. You know, right now is a piece of heaven for me because God is preparing me for what is next. God is preparing me for eternity. And if I will seek him, if I will pursue him, and if I will ask him to reveal himself to me through the Holy Spirit, I'm getting a glimpse of heaven and I'm getting a glimpse of what it's gonna be like to be in eternity in the presence of the living God forever and forever ever and forever. You see this destiny that we all talk about, that all the preachers speak of today, what I want you to know is my destiny isn't here on this earth. My destiny doesn't have to do anything to do with my job. It doesn't have to do anything with my success. It doesn't have to have anything to do with my career. My destiny is the fact that God is preparing me for a greater work that is eternal, not just temporary and confined to this earth of which I'm a part. There's much more to what life has to offer than this temporary earth that we're a part of. The second thing is this. What is my reality? 
Take your Bibles with me, if you would, to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we're going to read verse 12. Now, 1 Corinthians 13, we often know, and we hear this quoted, at what? Weddings. It's the love chapter, right? So you'll hear this quoted often at weddings. But what Paul is actually speaking to is this. He was dealing with a church that was chasing sort of the evidence of the Spirit that would be derived through certain gifts, like if you could preach or if you could sing, if you could speak in tongues, if you could. So everybody were pursuing these gifts that would make them look good. And he said, hey, 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 guys, you're forgetting something. Everything that we do as Christians is not about anything other than the fact that the love of Jesus Christ is all that we need. And then he comes and he says this. In verse 12, at the end of chapter 13, he says, for now, we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully what? Known. So what is my reality? My reality is this, is once I leave this earth, I fully know. I fully know. At that moment, I comprehend the reality of God. It's kind of like that moment that Moses had in the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 11. It says that Moses spoke face to face to God. Now, he didn't see the glory of God, right? We know that, that it had to be hidden because he could not, he, he would be overwhelmed by the glory of God. It would strike him dead if he were to see the glory of God. But what that face to face means is that he was in conversation with God. It was unhindered. There was no barrier. It was a complete time of intimacy. And what we're going to experience when we leave this earth, our reality is that we're going to fully know. I mean, can you think about that moment when you take your last breath on this earth, you and I as believers will in that moment, we will move to the presence of God and we will have full knowledge and full understanding of all of this stuff that we're trying to comprehend that our feeble minds just sometimes don't get. I mean, isn't it difficult sometimes in the feebleness of our own minds to think about that song we were singing that God spoke the world into existence? Isn't it in our feeble minds very difficult to understand the billions upon billions upon billions upon billions of galaxies? Well, guess what? When I die and I enter into the presence of God, Paul says, you're going to fully know because you're going to be face to face face to face. Now, some of us get a little excited when we think about the fact that we've been redeemed by Jesus Christ. Some of us get a little excited when we think about, you know, the great thing about Christianity. I've shared with you guys my journey. I looked at all the major religions of the world because I was sitting there trying to go, have I been programmed or have I been converted? And I was really at a place when I was 19 years of age, but man, I've been programmed. I grew up this way, I was taught this way, I wanna be converted, and I went on that journey, and the one thing that I kept coming back to is there's no greater love than the love of Jesus Christ. He laid down his life for me. He knew that I wasn't good enough, he knew that I was gonna fail, he knew that I needed grace, and guess what? He did whatever he had to do to the point of death, and while that may excite me some now, Think about it when you know that you know that you know that you know that you know and you're in the presence of the living God. That's what Paul's getting across here. You're gonna be face to face. He notices this, I want you to look. He says, now we see only as a reflection in a mirror, a mirror. Now, in part, then I shall know fully even as I am fully known. Here's, here's what I want you to understand. Our reality today is a little bit foggy. We don't have perfect clarity. Here's what's interesting about this text. Corinth made mirrors. Did you know that? Yeah. So what a great analogy. See, modern day example that Paul was giving, right? And he said, let me put it in a context that you can understand. Let's talk about mirrors. But here were the problem with their mirrors. Our mirrors are pretty clear, unfortunately, right? This whole aging thing, it's like every day. Well, where did that spot come from, you know? 
dude, you don't look, you, you ain't all that anymore, right? So, so, so it just, it's, it's a little bit, uh, it can be a little discouraging when you look in the modern day mirrors, especially, you know, you want to dim the lights a little bit so you don't get the full view. And so, but what happens here in Corinth is the way that they had mirrors is they were polished metal, was polished. So, so we're thinking a mirror, right, all this clarity. No, 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 it was polished metal. And so you could get sort of a distorted view, right? But you couldn't get the, you could, you could not get the full view with complete clarity. And so the idea that, that Paul is saying is, look, when, when, you're, when you're looking at God now, you're, you know, you're, it's a little distorted. It's not quite clear. But what's going to happen when you go into the presence of God is going to be, I see. I get it. I understand it. You're going to fully know in that moment. So not only would I enter into the presence of God, but I am going to fully know. Have you ever considered that someone that has passed and gone on before you, and you just step back and you think for a moment, what are they experiencing now? Well, what they're experiencing, according to Paul, is they're experiencing the very presence of God and they have full comprehension. How exciting is that? Full comprehension. God, his destiny, his meaning, his purpose is fully unveiled to me. I'm, not, I'm no longer hindered in my view and in my understanding, but it is clear to me. The other thing I like about this is what is my identity? My identity not only will I fully know, but he says what? Fully known. Known. Think about that. Have you ever considered the fact that God knows you? Not only can we be face to face with him to know him, but God knows you. Think about the very truth that God created you for a very specific purpose. The moment that you were conceived and the moment that you came to this earth, he had a very specific purpose for your destiny. He had a very specific purpose for your life. And he, along the way, has just consistently been trying to guide you, to lead you, to direct you, so that you fulfill that intent that he has for your life. So many of us struggle with identity, we struggle with who we are. And the reason for that, I believe, is that we continue to look in the wrong direction. We continue to look at what the world has to offer, what other people have to offer, what it is that someone says about me. But what I share with you today is God created you, God gifted you, God gave you talents, God gave you things that you need to be giving back to the world. And he's sitting here today and he's trying to steer you, he's trying to direct you. He's trying to move you along that path because he knows you. He knows why you're here. And here's what happens. We get off course because of everything that happens in our life. It moves us in directions we should not be going. It puts us in mindsets that we should not have. The world is telling us that we're not good enough, that we don't measure up, that we're not anything, that we are worthless. It'll do all these things to kind of misdirect us. What I'm telling you here today is that one day, as a believer, you will fully know God, but even more importantly, you are fully known. God today has a plan and purpose for your life, and God has a plan and purpose for your destiny eternally. Quit looking anywhere else except Look, face-to-face, one-on-one, connected with God. The third thing is this, or the fourth thing is this, what is my destiny? I want you to look with me in the book of Revelation chapter 21. The book of Revelation chapter 21, and I want you to see specifically in verses 1 through 5, if you'll read there with me. It says, then I saw what? A new heaven and a new what? Earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, look, 
God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, mourning, crying, or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. What do you have a picture of here? You have a picture of here, now God establishes the new heaven and the new earth. He now is saying, I am gonna bring things, here's the idea here, I am gonna bring things as they ought to be. When God originally created man, what did I share with you? He had a purpose and he had a reason, and it wasn't to drive us out of the garden. His purpose and his reason was to be in fellowship with us. And in this moment, what you see here is God renews that place, that Garden of Eden, that new heaven, that new earth, that new Jerusalem. God brings forth that place that we will all be in eternity, in right relationship with him forever and ever and ever. All pain gone away. All tears gone away, all death gone away, all mourning gone away, finished over. So my destiny is number one, I'm going into the presence of God. Number two, I'm gonna see him face to face. I'm gonna understand him fully. Number three, I, he is gonna, he, I am fully known to him. I am in a personal, intimate relationship with God. And then finally, number four, ultimately, I'm gonna be a part of that new heaven and that new earth. And I will reign with Christ for all of eternity in the place that God designed me to be in right relationship with him, aligned with him and what he has for my existence. So if you're here today and you're discouraged, you're here today and you have a lot of doubt, you're here today and you're looking for answers, here's my thing. I just encourage you to go on the journey, to start asking yourself the questions, to start looking and seeking and going after God with everything that you possibly ha can. And what I can share with you is this, is that be aware, all the garbage of life will disrupt you. All the garbage of life will deter you. All the garbage of life will put you in a position to where you sometimes feel like giving up. But I'm gonna share with you today that our God so desires to be in a relationship with us that he will never give up. He will always reach out. He is ever seeking. He ever desires to be in a relationship with you and I, so much so that he wants to create that new heaven and that new earth of which we all can be a part. So today, if you're here and you're wondering what is next, if you're a believer, it's really, really clear. If you die today, you go into the presence of the living God. If you die today, your reality will be that you will fully know him. You'll see and understand things that my mind cannot comprehend while I'm here on this earth. Number three is you'll clearly understand your identity, why he created you, the purpose for your life and your existence. And then number four, you're going to be a part of that new heaven and that new earth, our final destination. That place where we are in union with God that we now comprehend and completely understand why God created us and what he designed us to be. And here's what I'm gonna tell you. From there, and, I, and this is, we're, gonna, we're gonna do this next week. From there, when we go to heaven and there's this new heaven and new earth, it isn't like I'm, in this et I'm on this eternal cloud, you know, playing the harp, right? It's not like, um, you know, I'm, I'm in this uh, uh, choir, this perpetual choir. What, but I tell you, if I'm there with Elvis, that might be all right. I'll, I'll do that. I'm an Elvis fan, you guys know. But, so that'd be kind of cool. But, but what I'm sharing with you is this. It's not this just perpetual place where our spirit floats around and nothing happens. What we're gonna look at next week is actually it's a kingdom. It's a city. It's a place. And you know what? Our, and, there, and there are positions and there are places and there are authorities in heaven. And you know what that's designed? You know how, you know, your position, your place, your, your authority in heaven, what drives that is discovering your destiny, your bit of heaven here on earth. 
That's what I want you to know today is that heaven starts now. It starts now. Do you get that? Do you understand what I'm saying? Heaven starts now. You say, well, how does it start now? Heaven is when God reveals to us our destiny, our purpose, and our reason. And those of you who have said yes to Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God is unveiling that to you. He's unveiling your purpose, your reason, your destiny. So guess what? That unveiling means that you get to experience what God has for you, and we can experience that not just in heaven, but we can experience that here on earth. I can have a little bit of heaven right here on earth. That excites me. That encourages me. Because whenever I have one of those days, I need to remember this, right? Whenever I have one of those moments, I need to remember this. Whenever I feel like I don't want to get out of bed, I need to remember this. Whenever I feel like I don't want to go to that next meeting or talk to that next person or pay that next bill, I need to remember that this little light affliction over here has very little to do with the greater glory in the presence of God. And guess what? I can experience that greater glory today. You know... There was a song, we all, we, I, I guarantee you, all of us in the, this room listen to this song at some point in time. And I think this song became so popular because there's great truth in this very simple song. There was a group called Mercy Me that wrote a song ca called I Can Only Imagine. I Can Only Imagine is sold, number one selling Christian single ever right? It top charts, the Christian charts, the country charts, the pop charts. I mean, I can only imagine when it came out, it was everywhere. It still sells today. Like over three and a half, four million copies have sold today. They had a movie uh, about it as well, if you remember. And why was that song so popular? I believe that song was so popular because it, it struck a chord within every single one of us. Is that, you know, we quite don't understand eternity we search for it, we try to discover it, we try to understand our destiny and our purpose, and we try to understand what God has for us on earth and, not, and what he has for us in eternity, and we're, we're really all on this journey, and, and let's be real, we're all seeking to understand it. We're all seeking to comprehend it. And this particular song there was a lot of truth in this song in that we all imagine. We do. We imagine. We imagine what it's going to be like to live a day where I'm not weighed down by some event that occurred in my past. We all imagine what it's going to be like to be in a place to where I don't have to worry about a a family member that's struggling in their life. We all imagine Sophie here with us today on the front row struggling with breast cancer. Imagining why? We all, and what we, what we have, what this song did is it brought us to a place to where we could go to the presence of God. You know the reason why we worship? Because it puts us in a position to where we can get as close to God and be face to face. Face to face. And just for a moment we could imagine that all that weighs us, all that hinders us, all that we struggle with, all of the strife, that just for a moment that it's not there, that just for a moment, it doesn't define me. And everybody gravitated to this song because it brought us to that place. And what I want us to see is that this heaven that God has for us, that we today can begin to experience that. But it starts with us choosing that our destiny will be defined by not what the world offers to us, but our destiny will be defined by our individual pursuit of God. And in that pursuit of God, his spirit will begin to unveil 
all the why, why he created you, your purpose, your reason, your being, your giftedness, why it exists. Quit fighting it. God's saying today, today, he's saying, begin your rightful journey to heaven today. It is your rightful journey. Come on, he's prayed, he has paid such a price <laughs> to get us there, has he not? I mean, think about all of it. I mean, think about what's been put together to kind of, hey, here's your sign, right? Here's your sign. I mean, a book, 66 books, 1,500 years, 40-something writers, God himself coming to this earth, dying on a cross, being buried, resurrected, everything that that ties into the Jewish faith and the Passover and the shedding of the blood and the atonement of sin. I mean, come on. How did this happen? God's going, here's your sign. Just quit fighting. Quit fighting. Quit fighting. Heaven is for all of us. Begin the journey with us today. We have prayer partners that are going to be up front. They can share with you how you can begin this journey. Maybe you want to pray with them. Maybe you want to take a moment and say, I want to begin my journey. And we can help you with that. In addition to that, there are some of you here today and you are struggling. The garbage of life is deflecting you from what God desires to do with you. Stop. Let it stop. Let us pray with you. Let us push you forward. Then some of you are here today, and it is what it is. Grief on a day like this can be very, very real. You're here. You're missing a loved one. And it's heavy, and it's heavy on your heart. Let us pray with you. Let us encourage you. So whatever your need is here today, we have a moment where we're going to sing. We're going to sing a song called A Thousand Hallelujahs. And it's going to give us a picture, a glimpse of being in the presence of God. This God who has a destiny, a journey, a reason for not just our purpose here on earth, but our purpose for all of eternity. Let us respond to that today in faith. May we pray together. Father God, as we come today, if there's someone here, Lord, that needs to begin that walk with you, Lord, may they in faith pray this prayer. Jesus, I don't understand it all, but I know that I've searched in all the wrong places, and today I choose to start my journey. I choose to follow you. Father, for those that are here that are hurting, for those that are discouraged, for those that are weighted by life, Lord, I pray that they will experience a freedom today, that they will be uplifted and encouraged by the truth that heaven begins today. Heaven, despite the hell on earth, we can begin to experience the greatness and the glory of God. Despite the light afflictions, the greatness and the glory of God can be a part of our existence today as we march right on in to your presence. Father, speak to us today. Let us take this moment to worship you, let us take this moment to seek you. Let us take this moment, Lord, to step in a direction to where we move closer to you and to who you are in our lives. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.
Church, you may be seated just for a moment today as we come to a close. Um, heaven, it brings joy. Next week, we're going to dive into some very specific questions. I'm going to try to give some biblical insight into actually what happens in heaven. Now, we don't have a lot, but there is some insight. So, for example, if you've lost a loved one, what might be happening today? What is the experience like? And this new heaven and this new earth, what's our role, our place, our purpose, our position? So we're going to go into that next week. So I'm very excited about it. So join us if you would. Um, I also want to note just a few uh, key announcements. First of all, men's breakfast, that's this Saturday. Is that correct? All right. So I know that we've got that coming up. So take a look on your app. In addition to that, next Sunday, we have uh, our blood drive. And I just want to note just a couple of things with that. Um, so it's from 12 to 5. Um, and you can sign up with the American Red Cross. There's going to be a flyer as you exit. Also, for all the donors, you'll receive a $10 gift card and giveaway entry for a camper trailer. All right. So that's uh, and that's a community event as well. Encourage the community to come. We're trying to promote it. And it's a way for us to give back. Also want to mention students. We have student camp that is coming up uh, there. You've got information on that. So make sure that you sign up, register and then kids camp this summer. Uh, so if you haven't taken uh, one of the little fishies out there, right, that's on the wall so that you it, there are certain things that we need. If you haven't grabbed one, please do that. And uh, it's been a great day. And I want to mention, you know, we have a wonderful opportunity to support this, uh, this ministry. And this past Thursday night, we in our Acts 2 night, we talked about what God has done and, and what, where he's been taking us and the financial health and improvement around that. And it's, it's an honor for us to give and it's an honor for us to be great stewards of the wonderful gifts that God has given us. And so if you're here with us today, we wanna to encourage you to give toward the ministry. And you can do that uh, one way is you can go to wccgive.com. You can download the app and give. You can give on your way out in one of the drop boxes or you can simply mail a check. Um, I do want to note, we do have, uh, I just want to just kind of call out to the church. We've got some, some benevolence needs that are coming. We've got people that are, you know, dealing with some sickness and they're going to need some additional support longer term, I think, from the church. And I just encourage you, if you've got any means to be able to give, um, you know, and just, just put it toward benevolence, if you would, and maybe it's an extra 50 or uh, 25, whatever that we can give to help because we've got, you know, we're, we're having some people in the church that are got some real, real struggles and battles ahead of them, and we need to be here for them, not just in word, but we need to be here for them in deed, right? So um, God is good. Mothers, we love our moms. We thank you so much for who you are. Have a wonderful Mother's Day and sure, an awesome lunch and some great plans. Uh, we love you, mothers. Have a great day. Take care.